Hey, welcome back to Score on Business. And we're still with Clark. Clark, before the break, you were talking about the importance, if you're going to have a partner, of having the right partner. Um, did, did you get to cover everything on that? Yeah, you know, when we talk about the word partner, actually, it's a common term, but I like to refer to it more as co-owner. They may or may not be your partner, so to speak. They may be somebody that um, you've known them before, they might even be a relative, and oh, we're going to be partners in this. No, relax, we're going to be co-owners of this company. Now, how does it work if you're a co-owner? Do you have an operating agreement with that co-owner as to what decisions are you going to make, what decisions am I going to make? Uh, one of my clients, actually, his, quote, partner, co-owner, was his father. And his father owned 80% of the business, and the son, who was going to run it, owned 20 and you say, well, the person with 80% can make pretty much all the decisions. Well, their operating agreement said, no, the 20% owner is going to make all the decisions of the company. You happen to be 80% owner. So all those things can be worked out if you think about it, if you discuss it, if you agree on it, and then you write up a document like an operating agreement. Mm -hmm. So as basic as that sounds, why would, well, we're buddies. We, no, Pete, you and I can do this yeah. together. Um, frequently it doesn't happen that way because you didn't do the work. Yeah, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's critical. Me. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me get you to dive in the weeds a little bit. Sure. So a company has a few people and they have, um, you know, the what brings in the cash can be a lot of different things, right. but things have to happen in order for that cash to come in. It might be that they have to manufacture something. It might be that they have to package and ship something. It might be that they're processing loans or whatever, and they have to have that. Um, you start, you're small, you start noticing that the software is a real pain. You start noticing that um, if you're shipping things, that there seem to be an awful lot of bottlenecks. It shouldn't take that long to ship 10 shipments. Um, what do you do? How do you, how do you advise people on how to work through those types of things? Very good. I like to prevent rather than fix. Yeah. And frequently in scaling up, you want to get going quick. Timing's critical. There's an opening in the marketplace. I think you yeah. and I can come up with this thing and get going. What we failed to do because of speed is we didn't think about some of those things going in. Right. Or that first person, second, third, or fourth, you're going to be responsible for doing this to be sure there are no bottlenecks. Now, did I hire the right person, the right temperament, the right education, the right background to know how to do that? And then you're going to write it down for me, and we're going to use that as a model. Now, can things fail along the way? Of course they can, things that are unexpected. But I want to be 90% sure that this is going to be tight. That's why when you're scaling up, it's the months before you start your company that that's where the decisions are really made. First of all, are we going to be a C Corp? Are we going to be an S Corp? Are we going to be an LLC? Well, that's interesting. So let's think about the pros and cons of each of those before we just start a company and get going. So what kind of advice and counsel did you get before you even started? And then it's, again, who you hire. What's the expectations? How accountable are they? So we want to prevent as many of those mistakes because we know there are going to be issues, mistakes, and problems anyway. Mm -hmm. How many can you eliminate or prevent before you ever get started? That's the key. It sounds to me a little bit like the, and I hope I'm remembering the right nursery thing, the three little pigs. <laughs> the, you had the choice to build the house on, of sand or build the house of bricks. Right. And, it, and what I'm hearing you say is you, you need some bricks in there up front. You really do. You can't grow through those. You you. No, growth is not the answer to everything because yeah. as we have seen, companies that are growing, this is fantastic. And gosh, if we keep growing like this, we're going to have lots of money. It's going right. to be a million dollar business. That's awesome. Except with growth, have has more and more cash needs. Right. So you're not going to grow without hiring people. All of a sudden, I need to hire people. They cost money and they're not going to give an instantaneous uh, payback to the money that you're having to give out to hire them. So, oh gosh, how's that going to happen? And then you need to hire more and more. And I see so many growth companies come to me and say, man, I I'm basically out of money except we've grown 300% in the last year. What, what do I do with that? Shouldn't I have the money? No, not necessarily. Depends on how much you had to start with yeah. and then how much you're going to need going forward. Now, where are you going to get it? I don't know. Tell me. You should have thought about that before you started the company. Yeah. Again, a lot of pre-planning and that takes time. Right. 
Yeah, you can't plan early enough and you can't plan deep enough into what it is that you're trying to do. Okay, so in a minute, talk to us about strategy and kind of how to get started building strategy. Good. First of all, what's the, what's the need that you're trying to solve for in the marketplace? Who will your customer be? And that's critical. And, and you're gonna base a lot of your strategy around what that customer needs, whether it's available in the marketplace or not. How are you gonna build a better widget to serve that customer? So what are the customer needs? Um, what's your sales model, by the way? Is it gonna be electronic? Is yeah. it gonna be paper? So a sales model uh, counts a big deal as well. So thinking about what those strategies are going in, you've gotta you've got pre-think about what those things are. And again, it takes time, a lot of forethought. Do it all in the beginning don't try and fix everything later yeah yeah because you know if you if you wait until you're growing so quickly right. and you can't scale you have unhappy customers that's exactly right yeah and fixing those can be very difficult yes Clark thank you so much for Pete, being here total pleasure thank <laughs> okay. you for the invitation ladies and gents we'll see you next week